grapes, pears, harvest wedding inspiration, more citrus. This one has like a papaya. There's another one. This one actually looks very cool. Figs, just cut open figs. Figs are freaking expensive. These people did peaches as their like, what they give guests when they leave. Oh, fruit's very expensive here. Take it home. It's literally everywhere. Welcome back to the comment section. I'm Brett Cooper. All of us here, I think, are very clued in. We all live in the real world, so it should be no shock to any of you guys that our economy is struggling. We talk about that a lot. I'm sure you guys face it and deal with it a lot. I mean, families are living paycheck to paycheck right now. I was reading an article recently and watched a video about this. People are ditching the traditional nine to five for a mixture of freelance and contract work because they're making more money doing that than actually holding a conventional job. Gas prices continue to rise. Grow Groceries. Oh my God, the groceries. I wince every time I make it to the checkout counter and that is not a singular experience by any means. Apparently we are all spending top dollar on our food to the point that experts are now coining it a luxury item. Give me a break. Before we dive into this though, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this channel if you've not already and ring that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section episode. All right, so I about fell out of my chair when I saw this article last week. It's from Business Insider and they wrote, Millennials and Gen Z's trendy new splurge groceries. Huh? I'm sorry. A trendy new splurge that no, you cannot say that about something that is basically a necessity that is a necessity. I do not think that people have just decided that groceries are the cool new it thing. Like we have always needed food, but now for a lot of people, it is consuming the majority of their paycheck. So if you want to call that a luxury, their big splurge, okay, but they're buying things that they need. That is not trendy. That is just living in our broke, hyperinflated, overtaxed country, my dudes. The article went on to say, groceries are shaping up to be a top spending priority for younger generations, a February report from McKinsey and Company found. The firm asked over 4,000 people from baby boomers to Gen Z about the categories they intend to splurge on this year. Groceries ranked the highest for millennials and Gen Zers, outpacing restaurants, bars, travel, beauty and personal care, apparel, and fitness. Yeah, well, I would bet that that's because all of that extra stuff is also insanely expensive and people can't afford that either. So we're just putting all of our money into the thing that we actually do need and we can enjoy at home, which is our food. Sorry that people want to enjoy what they're eating and have a good time because they're spending all of their money there. Somebody commented and said, I'm feeling fancy. I might go pick up a loaf of bread and an apple. Yeah, maybe even splurge for some sourdough if you're feeling crazy. Just wild stuff. Still alive, still breathing sharing a pitiful crust between them. The article went on and said, all generations are feeling the pinch of inflation at grocery stores and for goods and services in general. Again, no shit. The typical American household would need to spend $445 more a month to purchase the same goods and services as a year ago, report from Moody's found. That is insane. I did not know the number was that big. Isn't that nice? Like, doesn't that make you feel so happy and so grateful for our benevolent government? Everything is just going so great. The thing that actually really irked me about this article was the way that it trivialized millennials and Gen Z's purchasing choices. They wrote, Gen Z, meanwhile, said that they often choose high quality snacks and beverages, which makes for an expensive grocery bill. One 23 year old Gen Zer told Business Insider by text that he spends about $130 on groceries for a week and a half. Fancy sodas and drinks and random snacks at Trader Joe's account for the bulk of the bill. He also said that he spends about $35 dollars on protein bars. Before we get into it, because I know I can see your fingers typing already, you have thoughts. Should we blow our money on things that we do not need? No, we should not do that, especially not in this economy. Be smart about what you are spending. But the fact that they wrote high quality snacks and beverages and then followed it up with a relatively backhanded comment about this 23 year old really bothered me. Like it should not cost us an arm and a leg to buy good groceries, to buy things that will make us happy throughout the week. And I'm not saying that in some sort of equity socialist way that we all deserve to have our kombucha. No, like that's not the point. The point is that it is possible for all of this to be affordable for shoppers because a few years ago, it was. We could buy that fun stuff without spending our entire paycheck at the grocery store and forgoing vacations and other fun things and making that our trendy luxury spending category. I mean, just last week, a couple of friends and I were talking about the fact that going out to eat these days can honestly be less expensive than just going to the grocery store because of how expensive the ingredients are for the meals that you might want to cook. Like it's better just to go out to a barbecue joint and get food because that is cheaper. But if you still want to eat good food at home and be healthy, Cook Unity might be a good option for you. Cook Unity is the first chef to you service, delivering locally sourced meals from award-winning chefs to your door every week. It is also cheaper than all the other delivery options. I mean, what they have to offer is so appealing that producer Reagan actually has just switched over. She is leaving the food delivery company that she has used for years, the one that sends the ingredients and you have to cook. She is switching over to Cook Unity because it sounds so fantastic and because it is 
is so much less expensive. Cook Unity ensures that your food arrives fresh, it is never frozen, and their compostable, recyclable, reusable packaging keeps meals fresh in the fridge for up to seven days. You can pick as few as four meals or as many as 16 meals per week. This is an amazing option. If you need to meal prep, if you live a busy life, this could be for you. And they have options for different dietary preferences, including gluten-free, soy, nut, and dairy-free options. Their menus are posted two weeks in advance, so you have plenty of time to choose and get excited about what you're gonna be eating. Experience chef quality meals every week delivered right to your door. Go to cookunity.com slash cooper or enter code cooper before checkout for 50% off your first week. Again, that is 50% off your first week by using code cooper or by going to cookunity.com slash cooper today. It truly is wild to me that a food delivery service could be less expensive than going to the grocery store a couple times a week. Like that is wild but that is the state of our economy. It was possible for people to pick up their favorite bubbly water and get snacks and protein bars to eat at the gym or on their way to work and not have that be the reason that they are featured in a Business Insider article that is demeaning their choices. It's not like this person is talking about spending thousands of dollars on alcohol or cars or fancy vacations or living in some high-rise apartment. Protein bars, that's a luxury now? Okay. I am never gonna financially recover from this. And another thing to consider is as people are waking up more and more to the dangers of processed foods and big food, people on a whole are making more intentional choices about how they shop, where they shop, what they're eating, which already means that their products are going to be more expensive on top of inflation because eating that way comes at a very high cost. I would know. I hate going to Whole Foods. It's terrible because of how much money it is. Somebody commented and said, eating is decadent. Yeah, I mean, it always has been, but right now, it certainly is. But all of this does remind me of a TikTok that I saw at the end of last year, and I think we can tie all of this into a really interesting conversation about our culture and what we're valuing right now. And I went back and I found it because she just makes some really, really interesting points about food and luxury. Just watch. Here are my food predictions for 2024. Last year, I got three out of five of them right. First, I think that we are really gonna be seeing a lot of food in advertising and in media, like food is now a luxury category because it is so, so expensive. That's the important thing to remember. Food is now a luxury category. Instead of like flowers on a table, I think we're gonna start seeing food and people aren't gonna eat it. And it's just gonna be like a classic sign of luxury, just like in the middle ages when they would like parade around with a pineapple to show that they had so much money. Or grapes. The grapes, like all of these old paintings where women are lounging and there's just grapes hanging off of them, that was a sign of opulent wealth. And her prediction is that that was going to come back. And I would have never really put two and two together, but after I heard it, it just made complete sense in a sadly very dystopian, elitist, terrible economy sort of way. And then less than a month later, after she posted that video, she was back with a follow-up based on something that the Kardashians posted. Just look at this. Like she was spot on. So what screams wealth and excess wealth more than having an excess of food that you are not going to even eat that is particularly off season the and it is now just tablescape for your parties. No one was eating. It's there just to show an abundance. Like people were commenting and zooming in on the grapes and being like, I don't even think they're washed. They just got them and plopped them down on the table. Nobody is eating these. Khloe Kardashian actually posted this in like this third or fourth day of January. And this is a bouquet of flowers that she either received or ordered. And they literally have oranges in it. Cut up oranges. It's just wild. Like when I first heard her TikTok, I was like, "Mm, is this like edible arrangements? No. It is not at all because you're actually eating edible arrangements, hopefully. Somebody commented and said French Revolution aesthetics. Yeah, I mean, yeah, timely considering the state of our country. History repeat itself. Maybe it's time for a revolution. We're gonna start throwing tea in the harbor. That would be nice because tax day was really rough this year, guys. I remember hearing rich people in history having fruits as decoration just to show off. I wasn't expecting it to exist like this in modern times. Yes, and like this girl said in the original TikTok, people in the 18th century viewed pineapples as this sign of luxury because they were like $8,000 in our modern currency. Like that is how expensive it was to get a pineapple. And the rich people would rent out their pineapples as decor to people who couldn't afford them. And then they would get the pineapples back and they would eat them once they were ripe. Like it was a commodity. I mean, it's one banana, Michael. What could it cost? $10? It is wild. And we're seeing that sort of again. Somebody else said it's giving the capital in the Hunger Games. For sure, there is so much that we can compare to the Hunger Games in our modern era. Just a couple more videos because she just kept going because there were so many examples of this. After she made that video about the Kardashians, there was another prime example, the tablescapes at the Grammys. What is more luxury than saying, I have food, I have access to food, I have so much money that I can even afford to waste my food. Seeing it in um, flower arrangements like we saw with the Kardashians, 
or even with the Grammys when we're seeing it put out on display. Like that's just, that's the wildest thing to me. It wasn't like everybody was hunched around the tables smearing their goat cheese on a little crostini or whatever it is. No, it's just randomly placed in the middle of everything. Nobody's eating it. It is there simply as decor. It is as tablescape. Taylor Swift is not getting up, walking all the way around the table and eating a piece of cheese or eating a fruit. I would love it if she did. Icon. This food is simply waste, and we are going to be seeing more and more and more food waste as food becomes more expensive because it is such a way to flex that you have money and other people don't. She's spot on. She completely is. And there were a lot of people in the comments. They were angry at these celebrities and saying it's not fair. And again, I am not here to talk about equity or what is fair or point fingers at these musicians because they did not put on this event. They did not choose to have a charcuterie weirdly far away from them that they could not eat. So calm down. But the last example I want to show is not from this creator. It's actually about weddings. So I recently got married. And so as a result, my For You page and my Explore pages on Instagram are just chock full of wedding content. I have literally had to start going through and being like, not interested, not interested, I am done, whatever. And I cannot tell you how much of this I am seeing literally everywhere. Food decor. So now they're not even just draping grapes, but they are accessorizing the citrus with pearls, they're stringing together the tomatoes. Like this is not dried citrus on a Christmas tree. This is fresh fruit and vegetables being used. These are food themed events. Like go on Pinterest and look up food wedding decor. It is wild. And the top comment under this video was, where's the girl who predicted the use of food as decor due to the rising cost of living, making the necessary feel luxury? It's the girl we watched just a few minutes ago. Another one said, well, with the price of food, might as well treat it like fancy decor. Yeah, at this rate, that was probably just as expensive as buying a bunch of flowers or going out and hiring a florist to do your whole event. Crazy. And I also think that this goes to show that it is not just the ultra wealthy doing this now. It has trickled down to normal people having their bridal showers and either consciously or subconsciously, we have internalized this idea that food is opulent and something that is a flex, like she said, or something worth showing off. And I do think that this is very obviously a historical pattern worth noting because this did not happen accidentally or innocently. What we value is changing based on what we can afford and have access to. And it is changing so fast. And you should keep that in mind when you're preparing to vote in November. Just saying. I hope you guys enjoyed that episode of the comment section and maybe even learned something new. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and if you want some hopefully more uplifting content, you can follow me on Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok. See you guys next time.